If you are completely new to Node.js, you might be asking, what is Node.js? Node.js is a platform. It allows you to run JavaScript code on a computer. Before Node.js, JavaScript code would only run in the web browsers, like this one, Google Chrome. So let me quickly open a new uh, blank window here, about blank, and right click and click on the inspect here. And let's go to the console and let's write some JavaScript code. And you don't have to write this code with me. This is just a quick demonstration. Okay, so let's create a simple alert window.alert using this alert method we pass some message here let's say hello node.js and if you hit enter you see the alert pops up which means that the code that we write the javascript code is understood by this web browser let's also write another message using the console log method let's pass some message here let's say learning node and you see it is printed as well so javascript code is understood by the web browsers but it's not the same with our computer so let me open a terminal here okay and let's try writing the same code here console log and let's write the same message learning node And you see, it says the syntax error. That means it does not understand the code we write. So this is where Node.js comes in. With a node, you can write JavaScript code and it will run on a computer. You will also get access to the computer's operating system. You can read, update, or delete files. You can communicate with the database and much more. In the next lesson, let's talk about why learn Node.js. Let's talk about why you should learn Node.js. With Node.js, you will be writing JavaScript code. That means you can focus on only one programming language for both backend and frontend web development. It is also extremely fast because it runs on V8 engine and uses non-blocking code. And you will also learn about what is blocking and non-blocking code in the later chapters. Okay, So basically, the V8 engine is a Google's open source high-performance JavaScript engine. It is written in a programming language called C++. And it is used in Chrome, Google Chrome, and also in Node.js. And there are some other platforms using this v8 engine as well so you may ask how this v8 engine works let me give you a bit more information about this v8 engine and why javascript need such engine okay v8 engine takes javascript code and compiles it into much faster machine code machine code is a low level code that your computer can run directly so Node uses NPM, which is another great reason to use Node.js. NPM is the world's largest library of open source packages. So you can use those existing packages to build up your application without having to write them on your own from scratch. Node.js is also great for building real-time applications. And not only that, it is also expanding its territory to other platforms such as building a desktop application or even robotics and machine learning. So the present and future looks pretty solid for Node.js developers. So these are some of the few reasons I think why you should consider learning Node.js. We had a bit of a talk about Node.js and why you should learn it. Now it's time to install Node.js in our computer and start coding. So first thing we need to do is we need to go to Node.js.o and install Node.js in our computer. I'm on Mac so automatically it shows 
the download option for Mac, but if you are on Windows, you will get the same options as well. So let's click here to download and let's save somewhere here on the desktop. Once it is downloaded, let's run this. Okay, so the Node.js is installed in our computer. Great. Now, to make sure that it is installed properly, let's go to our terminal and let's run Node-V to check the current version. And you see, I'm currently using the version 10. Okay, great. Now with Node.js installed, we can give it a try. We can use uh, something called REPL that is R-E-P-L so it stands for read, evaluate, print and loop okay so we can directly execute code using node.js so let's just type node and hit enter and you get this environment where you can directly write some code just to give it a try so let's write 2 plus 3 and hit enter as you can see, it calculates and gives us the sum. Great. We can also write console log learning node. Previously, we tried to execute this code in our terminal and that didn't work. But now that we are inside this node REPL, we should be able to execute this one. Hit enter and you see it prints the logged message. Okay. So we have successfully installed Node.js in our machine. In the next two lessons, we will talk about JavaScript in the browser environment and JavaScript in Node.js environment. And there are some similarities which will help you greatly understand how Node.js works. Okay, I'll see you in the next lesson. Let's take a moment to understand JavaScript in the browser environment. It will help us understand Node.js. So in a browser, just right click, inspect, and go to the console and type window. Hit enter. And you see this window object has a lot of properties and methods here. And you can see a few of them we already used. We used alert to pop up the alert window here. Basically, everything that is available in the browser environment is inside this window object this is the top level object let's use one of the method available in this window object called open window dot open this will open a new browser window and we can give it a name of the website we want to open let's try http colorado.com hit enter and that will open the new window with that URL. Window has a lot of all these properties and methods. And there is something similar in the node environment as well. But before we go to the node environment, which we will do in the next lesson, let's also talk about document. Okay, you can also do window dot document and hit enter. Okay, so once you do, you get this document object. And this document object holds the current document, the current web page you see on the browser. Okay, if you click here, you see the entire HTML that is making up this page. So we can apply JavaScript to manipulate this document object. Let's say we want to change the background color from white to red. Okay, so we can do that using JavaScript. So what we can do is we can go to the document, right? And we can use query selector and we give the selector what we're trying to manipulate. And in this case, let's apply this to the body of the document. Okay. And then we want to manipulate this style with background color. Okay. And let's give it a color of red. Okay. So hit enter. And you see that we were able to manipulate the document object. We used the JavaScript to 
turns the background color. So what I would like you to understand from this lesson is that in the browser environment we have window object which is the top level wrapper object and we have document object inside that window object and this document object is what represents our document our page web page okay so let's go back to the node.js environment and see how this knowledge will help you understand node.js see you in the next lesson let's understand javascript in node.js environment so i'm back to my terminal window and if you still have this node repo running you can exit using the shortcut control c or command c okay so just like we have window object in the browser environment we have something called global in node.js okay so if you type first you need to type node get into the node repo mode and then type global so global is similar to window object and once you hit enter you see all these properties and methods we have available inside the global object okay so we have a process inside this global object which represents the document okay so the node.js application you will build will be running in this process so just like we have window and then we have document and everything the entire markup the the template we create the web page we create is inside this document in a similar way in the node.js environment we have the global object the wrapper object and we have the process and this is the process the node.js process okay so inside this process object we have the title we have the versions we have the version of the v8 engine and a lot of other properties here and we also have the set interval and set timer so you might know these methods they are available in the browser environment as well as in the node.js environment as well okay and to exit you can obviously press ctrl c or you can even use process dot exit method as well okay so this is a basic overview of node.js just like we have the window object and the document in the browser mode we have global and we have process in node.js now it is time for us to start writing some code okay so go ahead and create a folder wherever you want you might want to create in a desktop or you want to create in some root directory I, what i've done here is i have created this folder called note react in the root okay so if you go to the terminal and list out all the files using this ls command you see i have all these uh, folders here if i want to go to desktop i would do desktop and there i see a lot of files here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the root directory using the CD and clear out the rest of the commands there and if I list out I have all these folders here and node react also must be here somewhere yeah node react so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go inside this folder CD node react okay and I have nothing there so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new file and you can just go there and manually create a new folder or you can do from the command line so make directory let's call it node basic okay so it has been created let's create a file inside this uh, node basic so let's get inside node basic and let's create a file using this touch let's call it app.js okay and let me drag this to my text editor i'm using sublime text here okay so i have this project here add.js let's write something here very simple let's write console log hello from node.js okay 
Let's save this file. Let's go to the terminal and we are inside that project, right? So here, what I can do is I want to execute this file, app.js. So I can use node for that. So node app.js, hit enter, and you see hello from node.js because that is what we are logging in this file. Perfect. Let's learn a bit more about all these basics because these basics comes really handy and really really useful when you actually start building real application okay so let's continue in few other lessons learning the basics making ourselves comfortable before we begin writing the actual code actual code and start building real applications all right see you in the next lesson thank you in this lesson you will learn about functions in fact, we're going to be creating a very simple function, but we will import, export, we will use some modern JavaScript, and all this will help you later when we start building Node.js application, okay? So let's clear this out and let's create a function, okay? Function, let's call it sum. It will take two arguments and it will return the total. A plus B okay so this is a very simple function it will just add you give two arguments and it will give you the sum right now let's create a variable in JavaScript there are a couple of ways of creating a variable you can use the keyword va you can use let or you can use const and I recommend using const so if your variable the value of the variable will change over time then you can use let otherwise you can use const okay so let's create a constant variable so const let's call it total equals to so this variable's value will be the function so whatever is returned by this function will be the value of this variable in javascript functions are first class citizen so what that means is functions are flexible enough to be assigned as a value to a variable they can be passed as an argument to another function right so you have this flexibility about functions in javascript so that's why functions are first class citizens in javascript so that is the reason why we can assign the function as a variable value you don't get such functionality in every other programming language but JavaScript you can okay so let's assign this function as the value of this variable so okay and we need to pass few arguments so that this function works right so let's add 10 and let's give another 200 okay so we pass these two arguments that are represented by the a and b okay so this should give us the total so let's console log this total variable okay save this file go here and again let's run node app.js by the way you can use up and down arrow to use the the previous commands you used okay hit enter and you get the output total is 210 that means our function worked you learn about the ways of creating variables you can use var let and const and we will be using let and const quite a lot later and you will become more comfortable and understand much better as well later okay and you also learn that uh, functions can be passed as value to the variables okay so this is very basic but slowly gradually we will make progress okay so let's continue with all these basics in the next lesson you will learn about code separation how do you move this function to a separate file and import this function to use in this app.js file okay so let's learn about import export in the next lesson thank you when you start building an application you will end up writing a lot of code it is always a good idea to modularize or separate your code from the very beginning so in this case we can separate this function to a separate file 
So let's create a new file. Let's name it helpers.js. Okay, and let's paste that code here. So what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to export this function from this helpers file and import into app.js and use here. And later, if we need this some function in some other files in our entire application, we should be able to use that, right? So once we export from here, we should be able to use that function anywhere inside our application. Okay, and there is a way we can do that. First, let me comment this out, okay, and let me console log process. Okay, so if you remember in browser we have window object and inside window we have document in a similar way in node.js we have a global and inside global we have this process okay so this is what we are concerned so let's console log let's see what we have available in this process so let's call it node app.js and as you can see the process object has been console logged here it has a lot of properties and methods you already saw earlier but let's go all the way down and you see here we have this module object and in this module object we have the exports object which is currently empty this is in the root of this process object so we can take benefit of this we can add the functions that we create okay so we can add them into this exports object as a result whatever is added to this exports object will be available in the entire application okay so what we can do is we can use this exports to export our method so as a result that will be available in the entire application because entire application is running in the process in the process because exports is a part of this process object okay so what we can do is we can go here and we want to export right so module exports this object currently empty now we're going to add this method that we create perfect now we should be able to access this sum method so let's go back to app.js let me comment this for now let me uncomment these ones and here i'm going to require so let me assign that to a variable constant let's call it helpers equals to require helpers and it is in the same directory so i just use dot slash to load from the same folder same directory okay so this is how we import our own files our own modules and use them in our application okay now that we have imported this helper from this file what we can do is we can use helpers dot song so we require helpers or you can give it any other name okay so we require helpers from helpers and we use the sum method out of that okay now let's go to the console and see if it works okay so node app.js and you see it works so we were able to move our function to a different file export from there using module exports and use anywhere in our application in our case we used in app.js we assigned it to a helpers variable and then we accessed that method using helpers.sum and this is how it worked this required method you can use to load your own modules like we did here or you can use this required method to load core node.js modules as well as third-party modules that we will use using npm okay so all that you will learn in coming videos and you might also realize that this required method is not available in the browser environment even though it's a javascript code it is available only in the node.js environment let's comment all this out and let's uncomment the console log and see if the process has the module exports if that has some 
properties okay so let me go node app.js okay as you can see the experts even though we added the sum method to experts it shows empty why is that that's because the exports is private to each modules so instead of trying to console log here what we can do is we can try console logging here save this file and go to your terminal and this time run node helpers.js okay and here in the exports you can see the sum has been added and it is a function okay so you don't see the entire code obviously you don't see the code executed as well but you can see it has been added to the exports object okay so there are other ways of exporting it's a similar way but syntactically uh, easier to use and we will explore those options in the following lesson thank you in this lesson you learn to write arrow functions so here we have a function this is a standard function and with modern javascript you can write arrow functions as well so there are certain differences between the regular function and arrow function and we will discover the differences as we progress as we continue to build the application later but for the moment let's see how we can take this standard function and convert it to arrow function okay so first let's create a constant variable let's call it sum and we're going to assign this function to this variable okay so this function will be arrow function so arrow function begins with the parenthesis so you pass the arguments there so in this case a and b okay and then to return you first you write the arrow here then you write curly braces and a return like so okay so in a similar way so this is how you can write arrow function so let me comment this out for now okay let me save this file let me get rid of this as well so we have the function we are exporting just like we did before just a subtle difference here and here in app.js let me get rid of this and let's uncomment all this and give it a try so all we did here is we just change the function to the arrow function okay so let's come back here and let's run node app.js and we still see the result so arrow function definitely works right but there is much more you can do with arrow functions as you can see here we have only one statement okay we don't have multi-line statement it is just one line statement so in such case you can get rid of the curly braces we can get rid of the return keyword as well and put it all in one line okay very much simplified and this works perfectly fine okay so if you have only one line written statement you don't need written keyword you don't need curly braces you can just write everything in one line okay come back here give it a try one more time perfectly works okay with arrow functions for example let's say you didn't have any arguments you are writing a function that doesn't require any arguments in that case you still need to have the empty parenthesis like so okay so if that was the case you would have it like that what if you had only one argument instead of a and b what if you had only one argument then you don't need to have the parenthesis you could just have it like that okay just the argument without parenthesis that also works okay so arrow function is pretty cool it is short it is easy to understand it is easy to use and most importantly there is one big difference between the regular function and arrow function and that is these arrow functions don't have their own context so if you are using this keyword within the arrow function they would point to the in closing context okay because they don't have their own context okay so that is something to keep in mind there is a difference between arrow function and the regular function and the difference comes when you use this keyword 
So if we come across later with this situation, obviously I will explain. Otherwise, you don't need to stress about it. Okay. So basically, this is how you can write the same function using arrow function, which is very cool. Now, what else we can do here? We are currently exporting like this. Now, there is a simplified way of exporting such methods in Node.js. What you can do is in, instead of writing like that, that is perfectly fine. But what you can also do is you can directly use exports dot the variable name and this variable is returning a function, right? So this also works. So the entire code is now simplified to one line. Okay. So save this file and go here and give it a try one more time. Perfect. See? So using the arrow functions and using the exports directly, we can simplify our code and it is much more readable. Now later you might create many functions. You can always use exports and that's how it works. It's nice and easy. Okay. Okay, so we did a quite a lot of refactoring here. You understand about arrow functions. You understand how to export nice and easy using directly the exports, right? And we are requiring here and everything is there as usual, okay? Now in this short lesson, I will show you how to use destructuring to simplify your code. So as you can see here in our app.js file, we are trying to use some method from this file. So what we're doing here is we are importing using the require method. We are storing the entire module in this constant, in this variable, helpers variable. Then we are accessing one of the methods available into this file, in this module, right? Now, there's a simpler way. Instead of accessing the properties like so, what if we could just use some? Well, you can do that. All you need to do is use object destructuring. Okay, so what you can do is create this object syntax. And here, what do you like to extract from this helpers? You want to extract some only, right? Previously, you had helpers and you had helpers.sum, but now you want to just get the sum out of the helpers. So all you do is this. Using this destructuring syntax, you require only some from the helpers. This way, it is much more simplified and it works perfectly fine. Give it a try. Perfectly fine. Okay. Now, if you had some more methods exported from this object, let's say add, then you could also comma separate add. Okay. You could destructure multiple uh, exports, whatever has been exported. You can import, you can require using this object destructuring, which is much more simplified approach and easy to use and easy to understand, right? Okay, so this was a very quick and easy introduction to object destructuring. In the last few lessons, you learn how to create your own module and you learn how to require them and use them in your application, right? So you created your own modules. Node.js comes with a lot of built-in modules that we can use to build real applications. So let's begin by writing a simple server using HTTP module that comes with Node.js. And since we have already installed Node.js in our machine, we can simply require that. So let's call it HTTP and let's require HTTP modules from the Node.js. It is a core module that comes with Node.js. And whenever you are using a core Node.js modules or any third party modules that you will later learn to install using NPM, those modules, whenever you want to require them, you don't have to give them the path like so. Okay. So you simply require and they will be automatically loaded 
to your application. All right. So now that we have HTTP, what we can do is we can create a server. So let's call it server variable. And how do we create a server? Well, this HTTP module comes with a method called create server. Just like we have our own module and we have this sum method, in a similar way, this HTTP module comes with a create server method. And we can use that to create a server. Okay, so let's try that. HTTP create a server. And this takes a function as an argument. And this time we're going to write an arrow function. Okay. And this function will take two arguments, request and response. So based on what request we get, we analyze that request and give response. But for now, let's not worry about request. We will come back to it later and we will understand how this request response lifecycle works. Okay. But for now, let's just give some response so that we can see it in the browser. Okay. So let's just uh, write a response and you can end the response with this message. Let's say hello world from node.js okay so we have created a server using this HTTP module now why do we listen to this server so what we can do is we can say server.listen and give a port number so you can give any port number you can give 3000 that's fine so this is how we can create a simple server with node.js using this core module now let's give it a try let's see what if we get something output that we can see it in the browser. Okay, so the first thing, go to your terminal and run node app.js. Okay, so it's running. Now let's go to the terminal, and since we are listening on port 3000, let's go here and let's listen localhost 3000. Hit enter, and you can see hello world from node.js. That means we have successfully created a server using core module from node.js so far you learned how to create your own module and you also learned how to require the core node.js modules now in this lesson you'll learn how to use third-party modules from npm okay so let's go to npm and as you can see here, npm is the package manager for JavaScript and it is the world's largest software registry. So what happens here is that software developers from around the world have already written a lot of great programs. Okay. And they have made them available for the whole world as an open source project. So those projects are available in npm. So we can use those existing packages and use them in our application so that we don't have to reinvent the wheel. Let's go to our application and see what package we could use. Of course, we can use a lot of packages, but to start from the very basics, let's see. Let's go to the browser and we have this output here, right? Okay, we have our server running. That's fine. So let me come here and make some change updates updated okay so i made some change in my server okay so let's go to the browser and let's refresh but we don't see the updated code right we still see the old code what's going on what's going on is the server every time we make some change we need to restart the server so i can do Control c to stop the server and run the server back again okay now if you go and refresh you see it has been updated so this is a bit of a hassle isn't it i mean you don't want to go um, stop the server and make some change and then again come back stop and restart the server that's a lot of hassle right so what if there is a package that would keep track of the changes in your server and every time there is a change, it will keep track of that and restart the server itself. So we don't have to manually stop the server and start the server. It will all be handled by um, that package. Is there some package like that? Yes, of course there is. And that package is called NodeMon. So let's search for NodeMon. Okay, let's click here. And as you can see, 
the node moon package is here and you see the installation guide this is how you install and you can see the figure weekly downloads nearly 1 million so this shows how popular this package is this package let's say we want to use the first thing we need to do is we need to create a package.json file okay so that is a bit of a setup we have to do with our project before we are able to run this command to install this package okay so let's go to our project here the server is running let me stop and let me initialize my project with npm okay and you can do that using this command npm init so init means initialization so when you have node installed you get access to this command npm init hit enter and it will ask you a couple of questions the package name if you want to give you can give a new name or something like that but for now let's just accept the default name here version let's hit enter let's accept that description you can write something like learning node js entry point add that's fine test command hit enter git repository we don't have at the moment just hit enter keywords just hit enter for the moment author give your name license it's fine hit enter so is this all okay hit enter yes so with all this information, it has created a new file called package.json. If you go to our, our project here, you can see a new file has been created called package.json. Okay, so it is in JSON format and it has the name, version, description we gave. Okay, and it has the author name, everything. So based on the information we put in the terminal, it has created this beautiful package.json file. Okay, now with this, we can install any of these packages and use in our application. So let's go ahead and uh, install this one, node one. Okay. So here in the terminal, paste here npm i, or you can even write npm install. Any either way. This one is much easier. Just uh, one word, i. Okay. Okay. So it has been installed. Let's go to our project. And as you can see here, we have a new folder created called node modules. So any of the packages, you can see the dependencies we have added node mon here. So any package you install, they will be the core source code will be in the node modules folder. But you might notice if you see, you have so many folders here. So what's going on? We just in, uh, installed one package, right? Yeah, but that's how it works, okay? So this one package depends on many other packages. That's how it becomes a such huge number of uh, folders we get to see in the node modules, but don't be scared, that is absolutely normal, okay? So without any further ado, let me use this node mod package, okay? So this one is actually not, we're not going to use like require in our application. This is for a bit of a different reason, okay? Before I even use node one, let me show you a simpler way. Let's say, let's call it dev, okay? De for development environment, okay? And here, let's write uh, node app.js. This is what we were writing in the terminal, right? So let me save this file, go to my uh, terminal, and this time I can run npm run dev. Okay, so this is the key we gave here, yeah. right? So if I run npm run dev, see what happens? It is just like running this command node app.js. So let me go ahead and instead of running this like so with node, let me use node mod. Okay, if I stop the server and restart again npm run dev. Now this time it's not node address, it is node mon, and you can already see some changes here. Node mon is watching for any changes. Okay. Now, of course it works. Let me change here. Okay, let me get rid of the number. Let me get rid of this thing and let's keep it the way it was before. Save this file. Now, once you save, it automatically keep tracks okay, of any changes. So we don't need to stop the server and restart again. Since we are using node mode, I can go to the browser and restart and you can see it updates. 
Okay. Real update. Let me save. Come here. Refresh. It works. Okay. So thanks to Nordman and thanks to NPM, we got a real test of what it feels like to use packages from NPM, right? And this is just the beginning. In the next lesson, let's use another extremely popular package called Express to build a custom server. Okay, so let's give that a try in the next lesson. Thank you. In this lesson, let's use another package from NPM and this time we're going to try Express, which is extremely popular uh, package for Node.js for building real web applications. Okay, so we created our custom server using the core HTTP module, but let's get rid of this. We're going to use Express. Okay, so let's go to npm and let's search for express okay let's click here and as you can see how popular this express package is okay and this is how you can create a server using express so let's go ahead and copy this command so that we can install and go to the terminal let me stop the server for the moment and let me run this command so that I can install Express okay so once it is installed let me run the server back again and let me go back to my project and let me require that Express package okay and let's get rid of this as well we're not going to use them okay so let me create a variable const Express equals to require Express okay. So anytime you want to require these packages, you don't need to give them a path like slash node modules slash like anything like that. You don't have to. The core modules and third party modules you can just require like so. Okay. Then let me create another constant and let's call it app. And this app will be the express itself. Okay, so what I've done here is I have executed the Express app. So it's up and running and it is ready to listen to the incoming request. Now, what I can do is since I have Express, the entire package is available in this app variable. So what I can do is I can access all the properties and methods of this Express package. Let's use get method to listen to the request coming from the browser to the server okay so let's say it is coming on the home route it could be about it could be anything else but let's begin with just the home route okay so this get method takes two arguments the first argument is the url so in our case this is the default uh, home page that's the url okay and the second argument is a callback function uh, we can use arrow function for that okay this url comes from the request and we based on that request we give the response this uh, function takes two arguments request and response and based on the request it gives the response or if you don't want to analyze the request that's fine just give some response so let's say response.send okay previously if you remember we used end to send some text which is a bit confusing I would say but send sounds much better right so let's send some text hey what's up what's up from Express okay so this is the response we would like to send whenever people request this URL okay then what else we can do let's go to the official docs here so what they have done here so they have required they have uh, stored the express in a variable which is exactly what we have done we are we also have written the function but instead of this regular function we used arrow function that is fine right and we can listen start listening to this application on this port number okay so app dot listen and give this a port number so let's do that app dot listen and port number let's give 3000 that's fine okay so this is much more simpler than 
the previous one we created the server using the core HTTP module, right? And it gives you all the functionality you would ever want to build a full scale application. Okay, this express is absolutely great. Okay, let me save this file and let's go to the browser and let's refresh. And you can see, hey, what's up from express? Okay, we are nearly there to start building real application and I know you have been waiting for that but in the next few lessons we are going to learn the core Node.js what Node.js actually is and why it is different than the rest of the technology out there okay so next few lessons are extremely important they might not be extremely interesting but extremely important to understand Node.js okay so follow me along in the next few lessons and they will help you understand this uh, request response uh, cycle as well, right? And then we will be start building our application soon. Okay, see you in the next lesson. In this lesson, you will learn about Node.js event loop. So think of Node.js as a process that never stops, just like this machine. Just think this is not a manual machine, this is an automatic. Okay, so think that this machine is a node process that keeps running, it never stops. Okay, and it's like a flower machine or, or any machine you imagine that never stops. So you throw rice, if you throw rice, it grinds and give you a rice flour, right? So if you throw corn, it grinds and give you corn flour. So think of this, this is a corn here. So once it grinds it let's imagine that it went halfway through then you put some more rice on top does that mean it will immediately give you rice no but it keeps running that's for sure and eventually you will get rice as well so you can throw 100 1000s of different events to this node process doesn't matter it will execute one by one in this order first in first out okay it does the job and then move on to the next one but some jobs that might take longer than usual right some jobs like uh, reaching out in the remote server uh, connecting to the database that will take some more time so does that mean it stops wait for the result and then move on to the next one no it doesn't stop so that part is handled by the callback function. So it is starts executing job. If it takes longer than usual, it will leave that responsibility to the callback function, which will eventually return later once the process is done and instead move to the second job. So while he's doing the second job and third job and so on, the first job that, that took longer than usual, is eventually solved and returned by the callback function he knows that it has been done so he executes that and then again continues to execute the rest of the operations rest of the function okay so that's how event loop works in node.js node.js is a single threaded system and i'll come back to that later but that doesn't matter that doesn't compromise the performance of node.js because it is based on non-blocking input output system. Note this, you will not be throwing the weeds and flowers, you will be throwing events, right? So this is just a theory in the next lesson. Let's get our hands dirty and let's work with the file system and see how it all comes together, all right? I'll see you in the next lesson, thank you. In this lesson, you will program for Node.js event loop just to get a very good understanding of how node.js works behind the scene okay so let me close this operation here and let me go to my project and let me comment all this out for the moment okay for this example i would like to bring in one of the core node.js module that is fs file system okay so let me put it in a variable fs and require fs file system okay so this is the one of the node.js core module 
Now, what I would like to do is I would like to create a file here. So I can do it manually or I can do it from here. Touch, let's call it target.txt, a text file. Okay. Okay, so the file is here. Now, what I would like to do is I would like to watch for these files. Okay, so watch for any changes. So if there are any changes, I will use a callback function to do something with that change. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this file system variable and use this watch method that we can use with this module. Okay, so this module has a lot of methods available. One of them is watch. Okay, so this watch method takes two arguments. The first one is the file name and the second one is a callback function. Okay, so let me also create a file. Okay, so let's call it const file name equals to, let me manually I give the file name for the moment, okay, target.txt, which is here, okay, so we have the file system, we have the file name, and this file system's watch method will take two arguments, first one is the file name, and second one is the callback function, okay, so this callback function for the moment, let's just write console log, okay, console log, file changed. Okay, this is a dead simple function, but it will give us the inside of Node.js. Okay, so save this file and go to the terminal here and run this process one more time. Let's use node app.js. Okay, so it's running. Now, let me make it a bit smaller so that we can see the output here. Okay. So whenever this file changes, as soon as there is a change, it will use this callback function to output this message. Okay. So let me go to this target.txt file and let me hit command S to save this file. And once I do, you see the file changed is output. Okay, you do it again, you do it again. It works non-stop. It console log the message when it changes, then again waits for the next change. It doesn't stop. It is always waiting. Now, if you make a change, then it will console log the message. Then again, it wait for change. Again, if you make a change, it will console log and then again it waits wait for change. So it never stops, it never slips. Okay, so that is one of the things you need to understand about Node.js. Now in the next lesson, we will go one step further. Okay, so when it is watching for the changes or executing these callback functions, some callbacks takes longer to respond than other ones. So let's see how that works with a very simple example. That will help us understand how Node.js single-threaded, non-blocking input-output model works. In this lesson, you will learn about asynchronous programming in Node.js. Okay, so Node.js is single-threaded, non-blocking input-output model. So unlike other programming languages such as PHP or Ruby, they are multi-threaded blocking model. So what that means is if they have more jobs to do, they open more threads because one single thread cannot handle. That's because unlike Node.js, it's non-blocking. However, they are blocking. So what I mean by that is if there is a job to do that is going to the remote server, connecting to the database and giving you the result. So that will take some time. That will take maybe a few milliseconds or even a second. So in those languages, the blocking models like PHP or Ruby, until the result is received from that database call, the program is stopped, program is halted, nothing is happening. And that is a problem because there are so many other things that could be running in the application. So in that situation, what they do is they open new threads 
to handle those other processes, other jobs. However, Node.js has this non-blocking model. In Node.js, if the same thing happened, uh, the database call, that job is taking longer, then Node.js doesn't stop. It doesn't block, okay? It continues to execute other jobs. And while that is happening behind the scene by the callback function, once they are complete, Node.js knows because those events, those completed events returned by the callback functions are stacked on top of each other. So those events in the stack will be continuously executed by Node.js and then again wait for other events to handle. Okay, so that's how asynchronous programming works. And these are the few lines I've written here. If it doesn't make sense, don't worry. We're going to write a very small program that will give you a very clear understanding of asynchronous programming. And we will come back to this slide one more time. Okay, so I'm back to my project. And to complement what we just learned in the theory, let's write a simple uh, program here. Now this time, instead of writing what, I'm going to read file okay so use this read file method that we get with the uh, file system okay and this also takes the two arguments the first argument is the file name itself so give the file name and the second argument will be a callback function okay and this time we're going to look into the error handling as well which is extremely important if the error is not handled properly then the node.js process will halt okay and then our program will exit unexpectedly okay so it is always very important to handle errors in node.js so while reading this file either there will be success or failure right so in this callback function we will be expecting either error or data so if it failed we will get error if it succeed then we will get the data so here we can handle the error. So if error, let's console log error, okay? Otherwise, we can console log data, okay? So if there's error, we see the error. Otherwise, we get the data, okay? Now go to targeted text and put some random text. I just uh, paste some random text from Lorem Epsom, okay? So once you do that, before we try it in the terminal, I would also like you to write a simple console log. Okay, this is very important. And just write something here. Um, what do we write? So, Node.js async programming. Okay, let me save this file. Now, let me ask you this. What do we expect to see in the terminal. Do we expect to see the data and then this console log? Let's see, let's give it a try. Well, let me quit this running server and let me run it again, node app.js. And here, in fact, we get the buffer. So what we can do is we can use the data to string method, okay? And let me go here and run this one more time. Okay, so what you see here is we have the lorem, lorem epsom, this data from the target.txt, but this one comes second. First, we have this console log, Node.js async programming, which we wrote at the end, and then we got our lorem epsom. Why is that? Why this is not on the top and this one in the bottom? Because that's that is the way uh, we have written our code right first this function this method runs read file and then the console log runs however the output the result is opposite this one is executed first and then this uh, read file has been executed at the end after this one node.js takes the event and execute line by line, one by one. However, some events takes longer. So obviously reading a file system, that takes longer than just uh, console logging, right? Because this one needs the access to the file system, go to the file system, get the file, read the file, all that stuff. 
whereas this is pretty simple okay so node.js has this event thrown into this event loop then again another console log is thrown into the event loop however when it was executing it realized that this one is taking time what it did is it left the responsibility to this callback function and it went ahead executing other event so in our case this one and by the time it did it realized that okay yeah the app got the read file done and the this callback method returned the data then node.js said okay so you did that okay i will execute that again so it did that and then again it is waiting for more events it is waiting for more work so you see how it works node.js non-blocking asynchronous programming is absolutely incredible so i'm back to our slide again so it is asynchronous programming node.js is single threaded non-blocking input output model and even though it is a single threaded it is efficient because it uses non-blocking event loop and it keeps the events in a stack they will be executed one by one without waiting for any of these to complete instead they will be executed and completed as the process is running other callbacks okay so with this you should have a fairly good understanding of node.js and how it works with this non-blocking system in the next lesson i will show you a small example of synchronous programming as well synchronous which is a blocking model and you can in fact write synchronous code with node.js as well even though you shouldn't be but it is technically possible so let's see how that works okay see you in the next lesson thank you okay so this code we write in the previous lesson so this is a synchronous model so even though we have written this method first and console log later in reality the console log is executed first and the file system this executed later because it took longer than this one okay but let's see let's rewrite the same code using a synchronous model blocking model the model that is used by other programming languages such as php ruby okay so let's see so what we can do is we can create a variable data which will read from the file system okay so file system read file and there is a method called sync so anytime you come across a method like this in node.js that means that is a synchronous that is for synchronous uh, program by default it is a synchronous almost everything but there are certain methods available for synchronous okay they can be useful sometimes when you want to perform certain tasks and you want to make sure that task is done before moving to the next okay. so this makes sure it is completed on, until it is completed nothing else will happen okay you don't want this behavior most of the time but it is good to know that it's possible okay so using this read file sync method we give the file name as the first argument in fact that is the only argument we don't give the second argument because this is a synchronous model in asynchronous model we would give this to the the callback function that would handle this one and node.js will continue executing all the functions but because we are performing a synchronous task here we just assign it to a variable and once that is complete until this is complete nothing else will happen so once it is complete we can do console log data to to string okay so this code is definitely much more readable and easier however this is a blocking code and to get the benefit of non-blocking model that node.js offers obviously we can't be writing like this but it definitely is easier okay so let's save this file and see what we get okay const data equals to sorry this one const okay let me save this file and let me run this one more time node app.js and this time you see okay we have the lorem epsom we have the 
the read file data first and then asynchronous this console log later just as expected because this is a synchronous model so it waits even if it takes longer it doesn't care it waits and it gets the data it does that and then it moves to the next one whereas previously we had a different result previously we had the console log first because that was easier to read and this file system took longer so node.js went ahead and executed this one first and came back and did it later so this is the stark difference between asynchronous and synchronous okay so this is how we will be writing code in node.js so get ready for some callback functions okay and it takes some time when you are new it, it may, doesn't make sense and you feel like uh, uh, it's a bit too much but over time you will get used to it and you will love the fact that you can use callback functions to get things done okay and that is the beauty of node.js but at the same time it is a little bit complicated but you'll get used to it don't worry and you'll have a lot of fun along the way all right let's move on and uh, we are nearly done with this section and we will be very soon start writing api with node.js see you i am back one more time and this time we're going to play with functions a bit okay so let me get rid of this code we don't need this okay let me get rid of this as well and as you can see in node.js quickly there will be so many callback functions and it can be hard to manage them it the code becomes uh, complicated to read as well so we should take functional approach we should give responsibilities to separate functions for example if we get error let's create a function that will handle the error okay so you will give this error to that function so if we get the data on success then you will give this data to another function that will handle the whatever it has to be done it has to be console logged or something else whatever doesn't matter just distribute the responsibilities to different functions okay a bit of a functional approach okay so what we can do here is we can clearly see that we can create two more methods one for console logging the errors and another one is for console logging the data okay so what we can do is we can create two methods here const error handler let's call it and it will get the error as an argument okay and it can console log error okay so that is one method we can create another method as well and this can we can call it a data handler and this one will handle the data to stream okay so this will console log the data and as you can see i have written one liner you could also do it this way as well okay so if you like this way it is perfectly fine but because this is very simple function we can all do it in one line okay so we have these two methods now we can use them so if there is error we can use this method and pass the error okay so if statement also if you have one line you can just get rid of this and you can just write in one line you don't need the return okay however if we get the data if it is success then we can give this data to this data handler method okay give the data to this one and we don't need to use to string here because it is being used here okay so we have this one method read file now it utilizes all the two other methods one is for error handling one is for data handling and we use them here to simplify our code and this is a bit of a functional approach okay and it is beautiful okay so let's save this file go to the terminal and let's see what we get here so node app.js and as you can see we've got an error here console log data is not defined okay sorry so it has to be data 
let's go and run it one more time perfect so we have the console log first and then we have the read file result later because it took longer so it comes second this comes first beautiful right in my personal experience there are few secrets of understanding node.js if you don't understand those secrets then you might never fully understand node.js and that's a bit of a shame okay but these secrets are they're not really secrets okay so these are the few things i would like you to uh, keep in mind okay whenever you are not feeling super comfortable with node.js maybe you want to uh, check some of these topics and get full understanding of those topics because even though they might include a lot of theories they really help you understand node.js and once you understand these concepts writing code with node.js is pretty easy okay so javascript environment in the browser and in the server with node.js there are slight differences however understanding the both environment helps with each other to better understand right and the next concept is understanding functions very well as well as callback functions and what is their duties and responsibilities and how they help node.js work the way it works okay and the event loop how it continuously runs and how smart it is to get things done so that is the event loop and asynchronous non-blocking way of doing things versus the blocking way of doing things and why node.js is asynchronous and why that is the core strength of node.js okay so all these topics we went through now if you are still feeling a bit shaky that's fine we learn a lot of things when we actually start building applications as well so even if you have at least some basic understanding of all these topics which i have covered so far then you are good to go ahead and start building api with node.js if you are completely lost in those topics then i recommend you to go one more time and go through those lessons they will take maximum one hour or so right it's not much of a big deal so just watch them one more time if you are still feeling uh, very uncomfortable however if you've understood them fairly well then you will be having absolutely great time building api with node.js see you hello and welcome back now in this section we're going to start building the real api with node.js so let's begin by building a fresh new project so open up your terminal window navigate to the directory where you want to create this project so let me navigate to this folder node react okay and then here i'm going to create a fresh project okay so make directory and give it a name let's call it node api and let's get inside this project cd node api and the first thing you want to do is initialize this project with a package.json file so that we can use npm packages okay so let's begin by running this npm init command and it will ask you a couple of questions so let's go through them so package name and let's accept the default so just hit enter version hit enter description uh, node js api okay entry point index.js okay that, that's fine we can change it later just hit enter enter keywords node api okay also give it a name license is to enter is this okay just hit enter okay so that should have created a package.json file yes there is so let me open this project with my uh, text editor okay so all those information we entered are here okay so the first thing you want to do is uh, create a server right now instead of using the no, uh, node.js core HTTP module to build your own server we can take benefit of the existing packages and I'm talking about Express, the most popular 
framework for building any Node.js applications. Okay, so let's begin by installing Express. So npm install Express. Okay, now it has created this Node modules folder as well, and it has Express and all other dependencies that are necessary for the Express package. Okay. The first thing you want to do is create a server and we can use Express to build our own server, right? So in the package JSON, we have specified that we will be using index.js. Let's change this to app.js, okay? And let's create this file, okay? So touch app.js, okay? So here, the first thing you wanna do is import Express so that we can use it, all right? So const Express equals to require Express, so require the Express package. Then we create our app. So let's call it uh, app equals to Express. We invoke the Express, okay? So we have the Express application ready to use. And the first thing you wanna do is receive the request like uh, from the browser, right? And then you want to respond. Okay, so let's imagine that uh, someone is trying to get access to the home route. Okay, so let's begin with the get method. Okay, so app, you can use get method with the express app. Okay, and this will take two arguments. The first one is the URL. So this could be about or anything like that. But for the moment, just make it just a home page. Okay, so forward slash. And then the second will be a callback function. Okay, so this function will take request and response and it will respond with information right so in this case we just want to send some text so that we can see that it is working okay so what i can do is i can use this response send method and i want to send some a simple message like hello world from node.js okay so we have our express app we are handling the get request any request comes to this uh, forward slash URL, we are responding with this message, okay? Now to start listening to this application, we can use this listen method and give it a port number. We can write a port number directly here. Let's listen to port 8080, okay? Save this file and go to the browser. And before you go into the browser, make sure you go to the terminal and run this command. Node app.js, okay, it's listening now. If you go here, I'll give it a refresh. Okay, it's 8080. Okay, hello world from Node.js. Perfect. Now, you can also create a constant called port and write the port number there. Okay. And here, listen to the port. This can also take two arguments. The first argument is the port number, and second argument you can use callback function. Okay, so this function will simply say it doesn't take any argument; it just returns the console log. Console log, and we can say something like uh, use backticks, okay, so that we can embed variables, and we can say a node which is API is listening on port and then we can embed the variable like so dollar sign and call it braces and within that we can write our variable okay port like that okay now if you go here and again we have to restart the server which is not very ideal so what we can do is we can um, install node mode for this one so let's quickly do that npm i node one Okay, so that's done. Now it is here. You can see. So what we can do is we can use node mod. So let's uh, change this script to dev. Okay, and when we run that command npm run dev, we want to run node mod app dot Okay, so node mod will keep track of any changes and restart the server, so we don't have to do it manually. Okay, now we can go here in the terminal and run npm run dev. Okay, so node one is starting and as you can see in the console as well, this message here, you can see 
it's running on port okay and if you go here obviously it works okay so this is our very first uh, code for building this beautiful node.js api okay so let's continue the next lesson thank you when you are building a real real world project you will need to separate your code from the very beginning you need to be organized right so you can't write everything in one file for example in our case routes these routes they're going to be a lot of them so we will be writing a lot of routes so it doesn't make sense to write everything here so let's move this to a different folder and we will export import and see how that works okay so the first thing you want to go and create a directory there i'm going to open a new term, uh, terminal window as you leave it running okay so what i'm going to do is i'm still inside this project and i'm going to make a directory for routes okay and inside that i'm going to create a file called post.js okay so these routes will be responsible for all the post related routes okay so touch routes slash post.js okay you could also just manually right click and create folder and files okay i just like using terminal okay so we have routes folder we have post.js file and here we can move this route here we can still use this app.get method here we just want to move this method this callback function okay so just copy that okay leave it as it is app.get forward slash okay just leave it as it is and then move the, the code here this function okay so callback function so we can give it a name to this one const let's call it get post later this route will be responsible for giving all the posts to the front end right module dot exports okay and we can export like this as well obviously okay this way we can export this method here and then we can use here so what we can do is uh, bring in routes okay so const post route equals to require routes post okay you don't need to write dot js just give it a file name okay and you can call it anything you like but i like to call it uh, like this prefixed with the name and the route so it makes sense okay now here previously we had the callback function now that function has moved to this file and we are exporting we can easily use that here using post route dot get post right okay so this will still return the same text okay so all we did is we extracted the method from here to a separate file export from there import here and use here okay now if you go this should still work okay okay this can't be connected something happened here cannot find module routes to post okay because this is not node.js core module or third party module this is our own module so we need to prefix with the path name okay so this is in the same same directory inside this folder so this way you can load this file perfect now let's go here and give it a refresh and we still see that beautiful so we learn how to organize code now there is a better way as well instead of creating this module export we can directly export right so get rid of the const exports dot okay so this is nice and easy very simple to use easy to understand right okay so this way also we can simplify our code now we can go one step further and use object destructuring to even simplify our code so instead of uh, requiring like so what we can do is we can just destructure what we want from that file later on this file you might have 10 different exports 10 different methods okay but you might not use all of them so what you can do is you can just uh, import the one you need okay so here using this uh, object destructuring you just give 
the method name that you want to require from this route okay and then you can just use that here okay it's much more simpler and very much uh, readable as well okay so save this file and this is the preferred way i like to work okay so make sure everything is working refresh yep perfectly fine now before i end this lesson i would like to use one more package called morgan and what that does is that helps you see in the console the route uh, path so from which route you're getting requests okay so over time that becomes really helpful so let's install that npm install morgan and you can obviously go to the npm and read more about this package but we're going to use it it's really easy nice and easy and it works as a middleware okay this is another concept and we will be diving deep into middleware stuff but let's begin with a very simple example using morgan okay so i previously already wrote this one now that's a bit of a spoiler but const morgan equals to require morgan and we're going to use that here okay so the way we're going to use this middleware is using this use method okay and simply pass in whatever you want to use as a middleware and you will get more information about middlewares later but for the moment just understand that middleware executes in the middle something is happening something is started and something will end but in between you want to do something okay you want to apply authentication or you want to perform some validation or something like that something you want to push yourself into in the middle and do something done in the middle okay so in that situation you use middleware so when it's happening we're getting the request we are responding all that is happening in between you want to uh, log some messages okay that is the whole point of we trying to use this middleware and this is the one we're going to use okay so let's use this more and there is an option called dev that you can pass to Morgan. And when you are in the development mode, you see what's happening, what routes you're getting the request from. Okay, so this is really helpful. So here, let me stop the server and restart one more time to make sure everything works. Okay, now everything is the same. It's just the node mode running, nothing new. But if you go to the browser and give it a refresh, Okay, give it a refresh one more time come here and you see this message is logged and this is because of the Morgan package we just used so it is giving us the information it is saying that we got the get request to this route forward slash okay and how long it took to respond a three point something millisecond okay so this becomes really handy later as we continue to grow our application okay so this is how you apply middleware now let's go one step further to get really good understanding of middleware middleware is something you can even write on your own you can use third-party modules and use them as a middleware you know they are a bit flexible okay so let me just quickly create a sample of middleware okay so let me call it const my own middleware okay and this is just uh, using callback function i'm going to use console log Just write something middleware applied okay just so that we can see how it works and here what I can do is I can just uh, apply this middleware that I just created so app dot use using the use method and I'm going to use my own middleware okay so we just created our own middleware and apply here now let's see how it works so if you go here give it a refresh come back here and you see middleware applied okay but we have a problem here as you can see it is just uh, into trouble <laughs> something's happening behind the scenes something's not quite right okay so what is happening is we use the middleware but our app is stuck into this uh, console log into this middleware it is not moving on node.js as you know from the previous section it is a running process it is uh, the event loop so what happened is we process this middleware but it, this middleware is stuck it's not uh, 
passing uh, the process to go further. The way we can fix that is, let's imagine that it is taking the request, it is taking the response, and it will pass the responsibility once it is done, whatever it is doing, once it is finished with that, it needs to pass to the next, okay? That way, our application will continue to the next phase. Otherwise, it will stop in this middleware. It is always important because Node.js is a process, it's a event loop. So we apply some middleware, but we need to make sure that it moves on to the next phase. Okay. Now, now that we have applied this, this should work. Now we go and let me just restart just to make sure everything will work. Okay. So this is the regular Nodeman log here. Now let me refresh, refresh, refresh one more time. Nothing is happening, nothing is lagging, everything is running smoothly. And you come back to the console and you see we have the Morgan logs here and as well as our own middleware. And because our middleware was not doing anything else other than console logging, we always see that. Okay, so every time our middleware has been executed as well as the Morgan. Okay, so this must have give you a very good understanding of what middleware is what they do and why do we need to use them. Now imagine later on when we apply authentication, we want to protect some routes. For example, get post, we want to protect some routes. Okay, so imagine this is our authentication. So we could apply our authentication there. That way, when user goes there and if they are not authenticated, they will be redirected to a login page or whatever, right? So that's how middleware works, okay? So let me get rid of this. It was just to demonstrate the middleware concept to you. Okay, now let's continue further building this uh, beautiful Node.js application and learning all the basics along the way. All right, I'll see you in the next lesson. Thank you. So far, our application is handling only one route that is a forward slash. So any request coming from the forward slash is handled by this get post method, which is of course in the routes folder in this first file okay so here so the get posts any request coming to the forward slash is uh, given this response okay but in real application uh, there is a lot more to be done maybe you need to go to the database get the exact post and give that back to the user right so it could be very simple to very complicated what we need to do is we need to extract this logic from this routes folder to a different folder. So any request comes here, we give that responsibility to a different section of our application and that is controllers. So just like we have the routes file, routes folder and it has files, in a similar way we're going to have another folder called controllers and controllers also will have a similar uh, structure like post.js. So any post request we want to handle we will give that responsibility to the controller instead of trying to handle everything within the routes. So let's go ahead and create this controllers folder. Okay, so you can do that manually or you can do from command line. I'm going to do from here, make directory controllers. Okay, and I'm going to create a file within the controllers, touch slash controllers and let's call it post.js. So any post related request we will pass to this um, controllers post.js file, okay? And here, in a similar way we did with routes, in fact, we can even copy this, okay? Just to make things easier, let's copy and let's paste here. So we export get post, we can change this, or we can leave it as it is, that's fine, okay? So what we can do is in, we can send the same response okay so this is happening now in the controllers okay so we don't have to do it inside the routes now all we have to do is point it to the controller so, so let's first bring in the control okay so what we can do is we can write it in a variable let's call it const let's call it post controller equals to require and what we want to require, we want to require the controllers, this file. So we need to go one step up in the directory. 
so one step up because we are inside the route so one step up then we go to the controllers controllers post okay so this way we can access the methods from this post controller okay and here what we're going to do is we're going to use but this is not exactly going to work like that so what we need to do is we need to bring in the express as well because we're going to use the express apps router method okay the entire application we have built based on the express right we have stored in app variable and everything is happening there so to use those routes we can use um, express here so const express equals to require express the reason we are requiring express is we want to use the express router okay so here let's create a variable called router equals to express router and you invoke like so okay and this method is actually has to be a capital router okay it's not a small r it's a capital r okay so this way we have access to the express router now this entire routes file can be used as a middleware into our application okay now with that what we can do is we can use let's write here router dot get okay so previously we have done this get the app dot get directly here but we're going to change that because now this get request will be handled by the express router okay so router dot get so what do we want to get we want to get the forward slash okay and then anything we get here we want to hand that over to the controller so controller will take care of it okay so this is post controller and inside post controller we have this method that will handle okay beautiful okay let's get rid of this now and instead what we can do now is module dot exports equals to router okay so this way we require express so that we can use express router and using the express router this get post or any route handling we can do directly from this route okay so when we get request to the forward slash we give that responsibility to this controller get post method and that will do whatever it needs to be done and at the moment it is just giving the simple message okay so this way we have extracted the logic from the routes to controllers okay you see how we are building this pattern of building application this is beautiful okay now with this there is one more thing we need to do we need to go back to the app.js because we are handling the gate directly here so here this will be use instead it's not get anymore because now this route works as a middleware okay previously we were handling the route request like so using the get but now that we are handling that using the express router in the routes folder what we do is we use that as a middleware so we can change this to post routes okay so we're not just destructuring one method we need the entire the routes here okay so this way these post routes works as a middleware okay so any request we get here on the forward slash will be passed to the post routes and then post route will give that to the controller and that is how our application will continue to work okay so let's give it a try to make sure everything is working okay so looks like it is let me restart one more time okay let's go here beautiful since we are building api we don't want to respond plain text like so we want to respond in a json format right so if you're new to json format don't worry over the time you will be a perfectly comfortable working with the jsons okay but for now let's just uh, return some json response so here in the controller get post method what i'm going to do is i'm going to respond 
instead of send I will say JSON I get so JSON format is just like object so what you're going to do is we're going to use this object syntax and then maybe we will written some uh, post again so let me put it right here so let's say posts okay let's written a couple of posts just just hard code again okay? let's create an array okay so inside array let's create two objects for two posts okay so the first one will have title okay first post okay and let's create another post object and this one will have second post okay so we have two posts they have only title okay so that's our post and we are giving this JSON response okay now if you go to the browser and give it a refresh you see we got the JSON format okay so we have the posts and each post have the title right beautiful and here I am using this uh, Chrome plugin for JSON JSON view if you don't have this plugin you might see it differently but either way you might see it like so but either way you get the JSON response and I recommend you to install this plugin just search for Google extension JSON okay let me show you actually let me go to settings let me see my plugins here extensions okay and the one I'm using is JSON viewer so download uh, and install to your Google Chrome and then you will be able to see this beautiful JSON format okay normally when you are building API you don't actually use browsers like so so you can uh, read uh, the get request like so but normally it doesn't work well for other doing other stuff okay so there is a tool called postman that is really handy when you're building API because API is just the back end you need the front end application and at the moment we don't have the front end application built with react okay so we can use postman when we're building this API okay so it shows for postman it's free to use okay go there and install it in your computer if you don't already have so okay i have already downloaded here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to open postman so let me close it will ask you for a sign in that is not mandatory so you can skip okay and we can make request from here just like we did in the url so currently our backend is localhost 8080 right so that is the URL you paste that here and you can choose a lot of these options you have the flexibility so currently we are only working with the get method okay we're not working with post put patch delete anything okay so make sure it is on get okay you have the URL and send okay and as you can see we get the post response okay which is obviously expected okay so postman we will be using throughout this course so make sure you have it here and with this we are in a good position to move ahead okay we have organized our project in a nice way we have routes we have controllers now in the next lesson maybe we can go ahead and add database so let's continue in the next lesson thank you in this lesson you will learn to use database with node.js and the database of our choice is mongodb mongodb is a popular choice for any node.js applications once we have database we will be able to create new posts and save them in the database then we can retrieve those saved posts from database and return back to the users so we're going to begin with mongodb and there are two ways you can begin with mongodb the first way you can download mongodb based on your operating system whether windows or mac and then you can use another client like uh, robo 3 d which will give you uh, the visual representation of the database okay or we can use uh, this online service called mlab 
if you are completely new to MongoDB, then I recommend using MLab. It's nice and easy. But if you have some experience and you have MongoDB installed in your local computer already, then obviously feel free to use that. Okay. So let's begin with MLab. So go ahead and sign up if you haven't done so. Then you can log in with your username and password. Okay, so as you can see here, I already have two uh, deployments. Okay, so what you need to do is you need to create a new one and don't click on the environment. Okay, there's one button for environment, create new. Don't worry about this one, just go here on the MongoDB deployments and create a new one. Okay, and choose a cloud provider. We can choose Amazon, that's fine. And choose the sandbox which is free to use up to 0 0.5 GB okay let's click here okay and then click continue here and it doesn't really matter choose the one nearest to you let's choose US again okay. let's continue and the database name so what you can do is you can use node API just give any name you like okay and submit order I can just click here so it has been created this is the new one okay now let's click here and this is the URL we will be using okay so you need to put your username here the one you use to sign in and the password okay so we'll copy this in URL and go back to our project and here instead of writing everything here in our uh, app file what we're going to do is we're going to use .env file okay so go ahead and create a new file .env and here let's create a first variable let's call it mongo uri okay not url uri equals to the one the url that we copied from mlab i guess it's based here so here database user and database password we need to replace with our actual username and password so my username is kalarath and password i'm going to share with all of you <laughs> all right password tingle 8 just my name okay and this is the actual uri for our mongodb database beautiful now let's create one more environment variable let's call it port let's make it capital letter port equals to let's call it 8080 okay let's save it and let's use this port as well in our app.js but how do how do we load these environment variables to any of our files you can't uh, refer to them directly here so what we need is we need a package we we need to use one of the npm package that is called dot env that will help us access these environment variables in any of our files okay so let's go ahead and let's install this package so let me install npm i dot env okay Okay, so once that's done, we can require that. So this is our main file here, app.js. Let's require const.env equals to require.env. Then to use this .env, we need to invoke the config method. I okay, guess so .env .config. We need to invoke like this. Then we can access any of the environment variables. Okay. Now let's begin with port. Okay, so we have mentioned the port number here in .env, so we can refer to the env for that. Okay, so here const port equals to process .env .port. Okay, that is the variable. If that is not available, then we just give default value, 8080. Okay, so as long as uh, it is available in the env file then we will take from there if not we give them the default value 
okay so this is helpful when you deploy your application to the production in the production environment you will set a different port number here so that way your application will continue to work smoothly okay you don't have to go into these files and manually change inside okay so that's the whole point now if you're con confused about the process make sure to check out the previous section i have explained everything in detail let me finish connecting to the database as well so to work with database there is a package called mongoose which is extremely popular okay so let's go ahead and install that package so npm npm install mongoose okay now while it's happening let's go to our app.js and let's import that okay so const mongoose equals to require mongoose Okay, then we can configure the database. Okay, so what we can do is mongoose and mongoose gives us this method called connect. So to connect to the database, we need to give the URL. Okay, so the URL will be process.env.mongouri. Okay, so that is the name, mongouri, and this is the URL. Okay. then this is a promise based library so we can use then and cats block okay so then then takes a function as an argument okay we use arrow function here so what we're going to do is if it is uh, successful we're going to console log and because it's one line statement i don't need the code right? so let me get rid of that and let's write console log db connected okay then we also can use another method mongoose dot connection dot on now this will give us if there is some error okay on error we use again the error function here okay so if we get error we we console log Let's use backticks so db connection error error message. Okay, so this way we connect to the database. If there is an error, then we would like to know about that as well, right? So with this, if we go to our terminal, okay, it is running, and you can see. The database connected database connection error authentication failed okay something happened there let me stop and restart npm run dev so we are getting this authentication failed error that's because here in mlab previously we took this url to connect to the database but we didn't create a user for this database okay so what we need to do is we need to actually create a user particularly for the given database okay so let's click on the user here click here and then on your right side you have this add database user let's click on that and here you create a new user specific for this database so database username i'm going to use the same the one i did earlier color database password let's use the one i did okay i'm going to keep it same maybe i'll change later okay okay so that seems fine okay let me refresh this space one more time okay so we've got this database url we've got the database user as well perfect okay so now i took the same name and same password for the database user okay so if you did something different you need to update your env file otherwise you should be fine so go back to your terminal stop it and restart one more time and this time we get db connected there is no more error let me zoom a little bit to make it a bit bigger okay so you see here so depiction warning current url string parser is depicted to get rid of this depiction warning you can see here that they say use the new parser with this option use 
new URL parser to true. So copy this and then go back to app.js and to connect method not only that we give the URI we also pass this option okay so this will say that use new URL parser to true okay so with this if we go back this depiction warning is gone that means we are ready to start using MongoDB in our Node.js application so let's continue further and let's explore what else we can do to get going and start building this awesome API with Node.js see you in the next lesson thank you let me finish connecting to the database as well so to work with database there is a package called mongoose which is extremely popular okay so let's go ahead and install that package so npm npm install mongoose okay now while it's happening let's go to our app.js and let's import that okay so const mongoose equals to require mongoose Okay, then we can configure the database. Okay, so what we can do is mongoose and mongoose gives us this method called connect. So to connect to the database, we need to give the URL. Okay, so the URL will be process.env.mongouri. Okay, so that is the name Mongo URI, and this is the URL. Okay. then this is a promise based library so we can use then and cats block okay so then then takes a function as an argument okay we use the arrow function here so what we're going to do is if it is uh, successful we're going to console log and because it's one line statement i don't need the code right? so let me get rid of that and let's write console log db connected okay then we also can use another method mongoose dot connection dot on now this will give us if there is some error okay on error we use again the error function here okay so if we get error we we console log Let's use backticks so db connection error error message. Okay, so this way we connect to the database. If there is an error, then we would like to know about that as well, right? So with this, if we go to our terminal, okay, it is running, and you can see. The database connected database connection error authentication failed okay something happened there let me stop and restart npm run dev so we are getting this authentication failed error that's because here in mlab previously we took this url to connect to the database but we didn't create a user for this database okay so what we need to do is we need to actually create a user particularly for the given database okay so let's click on the user here click here and then on your right side you have this add database user let's click on that and here you create a new user specific for this database so database username i'm going to use the same the one i did earlier color database password let's use the one i did okay i'm going to keep it same maybe i'll change later okay okay so that seems fine okay let me refresh this space one more time okay so we've got this database url we've got the database user as well perfect okay so now i took the same name and same password for the database user okay so if it did something different you need to update your env file otherwise you should be fine so go back to your terminal stop it and restart one more time and this time we get db connected there is no more error let me zoom a little bit to make it a bit bigger okay so you see here it's a depiction warning current url string parser is depicted to get rid of this depiction warning you can see here 
that they say use the new parser with this option use new URL parser to true so copy this and then go back to app.js and to connect method not only that we give the URI we also pass this option okay so this will say that use new URL parser to true okay so with this if we go back this depiction warning is gone that means we are ready to start using MongoDB in our Node.js application. Let me show you one more option that is if you used the local installation of MongoDB okay then you can use the URI something like this okay so MongoDB colon slash slash localhost slash the name of your database okay so this could go in your env file instead of that you could have this but since we are using mlab let's continue to use this but i'll leave it here maybe later i can show you how to use it locally as well so let's continue further and let's explore what else we can do to get going and start building this awesome api with node.js see you in the next lesson thank you in the last lesson we set up database now in this lesson we're going to create our very first post okay now when we create a new post we want to make sure that the post has title and post has body okay now how do we make sure that we have these things and if the user is not providing title or body or they're sending empty title or something like that then we want to give them of some kind of alert some kind of message that no title is required and maybe we can even go one step further and say title has to be minimum uh, this many characters long and maximum this many so we need to create a model okay so we have created routes we have created controllers now the third and the last part of building uh, the real application is following this pattern okay routes controllers and models so models will basically work like a they help you communicate with a database for example in your database you might have post you might have users collection you might have post collection so these models will help you communicate with those particular collections okay so let's go ahead and create this uh, models folder in the root directory let me use terminal make directory models okay inside models we create post.js file touch models slash post.js okay so let's go there models post and here first thing we're going to import mongoose okay so const mongoose equals to require mongoose and then we're going to create a new schema okay so that's how we define how our post model should look like okay so we can create post schema and the way we can do that is by using the new keyword mongoose dot schema so make sure it's a capital s okay so this is a method Okay, so we pass the object to this method like so and here we define what we want we want title right and comma separate we want body to create a post we need at least these two fields title and body okay so title what do we want we want it to be the type of string okay we want it to be required and we can also give some message here so if it is not sent by the user they will be given this error message which will be really helpful for validation service side validation okay so required title is required and we can also define the length let's say we want to have a minimum length of certain characters okay so mean minimum length let's say Four, okay and max max length let's say 150 okay so this is for the title and it's going to be similar for body as well 
okay so body also will be string this one's going to be body minimum length let's leave it at four that's fine and maximum length let's make it 2000 okay so this is our post schema to create a post we need to have meet these requirements we need to have title and body they have to be the type of string if they are not uh, sent then they will be required they will get this error message all that stuff really good now we need to export this model so that we can use when we create new post in the controller right so let's do that using the module dot exports again and we pass mongoose dot model using this mongoose model method we create a model okay so we call it post with the capital p okay so that is the convention and second argument is the schema okay model name and the schema okay so this has been exported from here now we can require this in our controller to create a new post so let's go to our controllers and here we already have the get post method let's create a new method to create a post okay so exports let's call it create post equals to function similar to what we did here so it's going to take request and response and we're going to create a new post now the way we can create a new post is based on the information sent to us from the front end right so that will come to us by a request okay so what we can do is we can create a new post constant that will be a new post so we need to import the post model okay just the one we just created here we need to import that so we can here on top we can Im import that so let's call it const post capital p okay equals to require and we need to go one step up to models post okay from there we can uh, bring the post and then we create a new post like so using the new operator new post and how do we create a new post we need to give the title and body right so we can get that hopefully from request body okay and you will see how it works how we send this information from the front end okay so from the postman we will use and you will see how it works okay we, we can even actually console log before we even create a new post and save in the database let's see the information how we get okay so console log creating post let's just write down so it's easy to, to read okay post so this post will be coming from the request body okay now we need to also make sure that we have the route to create a new post okay currently we have only one route that will give the post that will give these two tiny posts right so we need to add another route here so let's copy paste here now this time it's going to be a post method because from the front end we are going to post to the back end and all we're going to do here is save in the database okay so this is going to be a post method unlike get this is going to be post and we can give some um url let's call it post okay it makes sense because we are creating a new post so let's call it post okay so this one's going to be now create post okay so make sure it is right create post this new method okay so this is our post controller now you could obviously extract only these methods here like so okay like so but let me leave it as it is but feel free to use it like so if you feel like it okay okay so we have the create post route we have the controller we have the model that means we are ready to create a new post let's give it a try let's go to the terminal first make sure our application is running so npm run there let's run it okay everything is fine let's go to postman and let's give it a try first let's make a get request we should see this post okay that's fine now we want to create a new post okay so the url is 
slash post, right? That's the one we create. New route, just post here. Okay, so to create a new post, we need to send. What do we need to send? First thing we need to make sure that it is a post method, not get. Okay, change that to post. Let's go to body. Okay, and from all these options, let's go to raw. Click here. And when you click, you get this option. Click here and choose a JSON, application JSON. Okay, so that is the type we need. Now we can create a JSON uh, format here to submit a new data. So the title. Okay. This is new post. Okay. And it's body. This is body for my new post. I guess something like that. Okay. So this way we should be able to create a new post. We are sending the title and body. Okay. So this is going as a request body. You see that? That's why we created our control here and we created a post based on the request body okay so that's how it works okay we're sending as a request body okay and even in the headers you can come here okay and then you can type content type like so which i already have here so let me get rid of this so make sure you have the content type set to application json that is going in the headers from the request and the body of the request will have this information title and body okay now let's give it a try let's hit send okay you don't see anything here because we're not responding with anything we're not giving the json as response however we should see a new uh, post here you can see here creating post and we got the id now this is due to um, the mongodb anything you create they give the unique identifier automatically okay because if you go to the controller here we are console logging the post which is a new instance of the post okay mongo's post model it's a new instance so instead let's give it a try let's try request body okay because we want to see what we get in the request body right do we get the title and body let's have a look okay change this to request body and come here and try it one more time let's send it okay so it will say loading because we're not responding any json that's fine let's come here okay and you see creating post is undefined why is that we send the the title and body from here as a request like this is the header request header content type application json and this is the body we send right title and body what we're getting undefined and that's because express by itself it doesn't parse the request body okay so that's why there is a very popular package called body parser okay and every express application you start people normally use that they install but i wanted to wait for this time because i wanted to show you why you need to use body parser okay so this is the reason you need to use body parser because without that we don't get the body parse so we are sending the request body but that information is not being parsed okay so what we need to do is we need to install that package okay so let me stop the server and let me install npm install body parser okay so while that's happening let's go to app.js and let's require this one okay so const body parser equal to require body parser now we can use this as a middleware okay so app dot use body parser and this one comes with this json method that will format the json okay so any incoming request has the body request body that will be passed to the json format beautiful that's all we need okay let's save this file and let's run our development server once again okay now what do we have here in the controller we are console logging the request body let's see if we get the title in body this time okay let's send one more time let's go to the console and great 
Finally, we got the request body that is parsed. And as you can see, it has been parsed in JSON format and we have the title and body. Beautiful. Now we can go ahead, create a new post, save in the database. Let's do that quickly. It's been quite long, but let's do it. It is exciting, isn't it? So what we can do is let me just comment the console log out now. So we are creating a new post, okay? That will automatically assign the new um, ID in the MongoDB. Okay, so what we can do now is we can say post dot save use this method. But in Node.js, you always have to think about handling errors. Okay, so when you're trying to save the post, two things will happen. Okay, so use the function here. Okay, so two things will happen. One will be error. One will be result. Or error or success okay so we always need to handle if there was an error if error we would like to let's say uh, give some kind of JSON response okay so the return the response with status code okay so these are the HTTP codes now if you go to postman when you make a get request let me make it quickly a get request here okay then we got the successful response and you see the status 200 we got okay so there are such sort of status code used in http communication okay so 200 means okay sometimes you might see 404 that means page not found so when you're building an api we need to make sure that we give the right status code okay so if there is error we want to give this status code of 400 error okay then we also want to give some kind of adjacent response okay so error error so anything goes wrong we give the error response okay so if that's not the case if it was successful then what do we want to do we want to give the response at this time as well but this time it's going to be 200 success status score okay and the JSON response let's say message we can even give message but it doesn't make sense so let's actually give the actual post the one that was just created okay so this way we can create a new post we can set the post and we also make sure that we check if there is error we console log sorry we give the json response with the error message okay but if it was successful then we give the json response with the actual post that was created okay with this let's save this file let's go here and try one more time make it a post method let's make the post to the correct route here Harris we have content type application JSON body we have this title and body beautiful we're ready to go let's hit send okay now we got the response because we are giving the JSON response and this is the actual post we just created beautiful okay now not only here we should see this in the database as well so let me give it a refresh and as you can see collections we have one post collection okay let's click here and as you can see that document is here the title and body okay so congratulations you have successfully created your very first post okay now this lesson has been very long and i'm sorry about that but i'm sure you understand quite a lot and it is exciting from now on it gets more and more exciting all right so this is it for this lesson let's move on to the next lesson and do more cool stuff all right i'll see you in the next lesson thank you in the last lesson you learn how to create a new post Okay, now in this lesson, let's work on the validation. For example, let's say we tried to create a post with, let's say only two, let, uh, two letters, okay? Because if you remember, if you go to post model here, we have applied this um, schema, which requires the title to be minimum uh, four characters long, right? So let's see if that works, okay? So if you try to create a new post with only two letters there let's see what happens first let's uh, run the server okay 
Now let's go and give it a try. Send. And we get this error message. Okay, so that's great. It's working. However, this is not really um, usable because we can't really use, show this error message because it doesn't make much sense. The path is shorter than minimum. Uh, it does the job, but it is not really user friendly. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to use a better error handling. So for that, there is a package called Express Validator, which is an excellent package for handling um, errors and giving them, giving users a proper error messages. Okay, so let's go ahead and install that package so that we can apply those validation rules when we create a new post. Okay, so here I'm going to install so npm i and the package name is express validator. Okay, now we can go to our project. And let's go to app.js and let's require here. Okay, so here let's create a constant. Let's call it express validator equals to require express validation. Okay, now we're going to use this as a middleware here. Okay, so come here and let's use this use method to use this middleware okay, and we execute like so okay so with this we have the express validator applied as a middleware now all we need to do is create this validation okay so in we could do here but i don't like to keep this uh, controller messy so instead i'm going to create a new folder and let's call that folder helpers okay so let's create a new folder and inside here, we can uh, create just uh, index.js. Okay, we're not going to have too many helpers here. So let's call it index.js. Okay. And let's write our validation here. Let's export using the exports and let's call it create post validator. Okay. And this will get requests response and next as an argument okay and then we will check okay and maybe it is a good idea to go to the official site and have a look at it as well so let's go express validator okay let's go to let's go here to the github site and there you see we can use the check method to check. For example, if we're trying to validate the username, okay, we can check that the length is minimum five, is not empty, and so on. Okay, so you can obviously go through this documentation, but I will be showing you how you could uh, apply this validation, and that will make perfect sense to you. Okay, so let's come back here. So create post validator. So the first thing we want to do is we want to check the request. So request, we use the check method as you saw here. You can use this uh, check method with this package. Okay. So check, what do we want to check? We want to check title and the second argument to this check method. The first one is the title or body, whatever you want to check. And then the second argument is uh, what response you want to give to the users. So I would like to say write a title. Okay, and also want to make sure that this is not empty. Okay, so this is also another method you can use with this package. Then again, request check. Now this time, title. So this check is to make sure that it is not empty. If it is empty, we will give them this error message, write a title. Okay, but if they have a title, if they write a title, but this is short, this is not long enough. Okay, then we can give the error message something like uh, title must be between four to let's say 150 characters okay dot is length using this is length method and we pass the object configuration so let's say minimum is four and maximum is 150 
okay so this will check against this rule and if it doesn't match it will give this error message okay so this is for title and we can do the similar validation for body okay so copy paste here body and this time it's going to be body write a body and this body body must be let's say between four to two thousand characters i guess so let's change this to two thousand okay so this way we can validate title and body and you'll see how it works okay now there will be uh, multiple errors you might not get only one error but many so in that case how do we look through all those errors and give them so what we can do for that is first we check errors okay for all the errors we create a constant errors and that will be all the requests validation errors okay so we will get all the request uh, validation errors in this errors variable then if error so the first one as they appear okay so as they happen as the error happens we will give them and we will give them the first one okay so we take here if errors okay if we got any of these errors from the request validation what we're going to do is we're going to let's create a first error variable and this will be this will map through all the errors so whatever errors we got we will map through each of them okay and just extract the first one and give it to the user as a response okay so errors map using this map method now this method takes function as an argument okay function as an argument so the argument we can call anything we like let's call it error and let me get rid of the curly brace because it's going to be one line okay so it will take the error map through all these errors and for each individual error it will give the error message okay but we are interested in only getting the first one from the array okay so we can use this array syntax with zero that will give us the first instance okay then we can return the response with the status of 400 because there there is an error right along with that status school we also want to give the json response so that it is user friendly so we give the error message and that will be the first error okay so all this will happen and then again we need to make sure that we let the operation the process run to the next middleware okay so if there is an error occur it will happen but that will not halt our node.js application it will continue further whether there is an error or not okay proceed to next middleware okay so we use this next method okay so we take request response next apply the validation we check for errors for any errors we look through them take the first one and give that for any errors after all this it will continue to run our application okay so we're going to use this let's copy this and let's go to our routes post and we're going to apply that here okay but before we do that this is completely optional okay but i think uh, this one i don't want to name it helpers instead let's call it validator that makes perfect sense because it's all about validation and we might add few more um, uh, methods here later as well so let me change this to validation okay so let's rename validator let's call it okay so this file is here beautiful now we can use this method in our routes post okay so first thing we need to require here so let's call it const validator equals to require and we need to go one step up we need to go to validator and we don't need to say index 
okay so if it is index.js file that will automatically load okay that is the benefit of creating index file okay so all we need to do is that beautiful okay so we can apply this validation before we create a post so before we even pass this to a create method we want to apply the validation only if this validation is passed then it will go to this method okay validate dot create post validator right that is the method okay and it will go to this next middleware okay beautiful before we give it a try let's go to controllers and since we're handling the errors there we don't have to worry about this one okay so you can get rid of this error check here so let me actually refactor this one let me just comment this out okay let's make it simple so post dot save okay and we can use then method then we get result okay and using this arrow function we can send the response with status of 200 okay along with that we send the json response as the post itself okay which is the result okay now let's get rid of this beautiful okay so now we can give it a try we have the routes we have the validation we have the create post method beautiful okay save this file let's go to our terminal here make sure everything is running perfect now let's go to postman and let's give it a try let's see what error we get do we get the similar or something better let's give it a try beautiful this is exactly what i wanted to see right so we got the beautiful user friendly error that says title must be between 4 to 150 characters and this validation is coming from the validator we just created here okay because the title was short so title must be between 4 to 150 what if we give the empty title we should see this error message let's give it a try again okay so let's say we try to create a post without any title okay let's send and you get right title okay so this is absolutely beautiful this is awesome validation let's create and we successfully create a new post and because we have the validation here using the express validator we can go to our model and let's simplify this a bit we don't really need this here okay so let's get rid of that to make it simple and we can get rid of this message and let's use the boolean true okay so required yes it is true okay beautiful so once you save that go to the postman and for the last time let's give it a try okay so let's try creating without a title okay we got that error let's pass only two characters we get this error okay validation and we can create a new post successfully and if you go to your database in mlab you see all the posts you have created so far okay beautiful it's been quite long but i hope you really enjoyed this validation process and i'll see you in the next lesson thank you so far you saw how you could create a new post okay make sure you have the content type application json in your headers and this way you're sending the body title and body to create a new post and you also have all these posts saved in the database that means we are ready to get all these posts and display to the users so if you go to our project currently in our controller we have this get post method where we are just hard coding these sample posts and we're giving it to the client right so if you go here I make a get request to the default route okay we need to make sure we have the server running okay so we get them right but it's time to get all these posts from the database because we have the actual post there now so let's get them and display to the users like so okay so let's work on this controller method here okay let me get rid of this to get all the posts from the database we have the post model that represents 
post collection in the database so it's really easy to get all the posts so let's create a variable using const let's call it post okay to get all the post we can refer to this post model post with capital p okay so that is the post model that gives us post collection from the database and with this we can use the find method and it will give you all the posts so it will find all the posts and give you it's really simple and really easy to use and later we will see how to customize the query we make but at the moment let's just not worry about all that and get all the posts okay and that is all you need to do then what you can do is we can return the json response to our front-end client or if we get any error we need to catch the error as well okay okay so then what we're going to do is we're going to use this arrow function so then if we get post we will return with the status code of 200 okay status 200 and the json with the post key and with the value of post is all the posts from the database okay that is all we need to do but if we catch the error let's say let's console log most likely we will not get an error at this point but let's log the error if we get any okay so save this file and with this we should be able to give it a try let's go to postman and let's make a get request to our default route here and as you can see we got all the posts from the database beautiful okay so we have a couple of posts here now what we can do is we can uh, come back here to our get post method and simplify this method a bit okay so by default express now if you go to the postman here you see the status code 200 that is the default uh, status code okay so anytime you want to give the uh, status code of 200 you don't actually have to give because by default the default status is 200 sent by the express uh, framework okay so you can get rid of this status okay and just uh, give the json response save this file and let's give it a try just to make sure that we get it okay. send okay you can see still we got the uh, 200 okay now if you come back here and do something uh, silly here let's say some typo here just to see the error or uh, what do we what status we get here okay let's send and you see 500 internal server error that means by default it is send out 200 if everything goes correctly so we don't have to keep writing the status code of 200 okay so that is one thing that's good we can even uh, update this method let's get rid of the status okay let's save this now another thing we can do is when we have the key and the value they are the same they have the same name that means we don't have to write it like so we can just leave it like this okay so that will do the same thing yeah. to make sure let's give it a try and you can see it's working perfectly fine so that's good what else we can do here in fact i can show you one more thing right now we have uh, used the find method to get everything that is in the post okay so we have the title um, title id and body and we have this uh, v the, the by default it is uh, assigned by the mongodb which is not really useful in this case so we can customize our response okay so what you can do is you can come back to this uh, find method and chain use the method chaining so chain another method that is called select okay with this select method you can select what uh, fields you want to get okay because at the moment we're not interested in this v version okay so we just want to get the id title and body and don't worry about any other properties okay so that that means we can use this select method and we can write it down what do we want to select okay so we want to select the id okay and there is no comma anything just this space okay so first one id second one title and third one body okay so this is what we want this is what we want to select from this post collection okay 
So this is beautiful. This select method is really cool. Now we can give it a try. Come back here, give it a uh, try one more time. And this time you saw the V is gone and we just got the ID title and body, exactly what we wanted, okay? So this is our get post method to get all the posts from the database. In this lesson, we're going to do some code refactoring and get ready for the authentication. The main reason I want to have authentication before moving forward is that uh, it is really important to have the authentication in the beginning because our whole application based on this authentication system, right? For example, right now, anyone can create a post, okay? So we have our database open for the entire world <laughs> and that is not really a, a great idea. For example, I can make a post request to our route of the localhost slash post, okay? If I send, I can create new post. I just did awesome year validation. Okay. Now if I go and get all the posts and all the way down, and you saw it. That means our database is open for everyone, and that is not a really great thing. What we need to do is we need to implement the authentication so only the logged in users will be able to create a new post. Okay, and that is the reason. I want to implement validation now and once we have the validation we can continue to grow our application okay and our authentication is going to be very flexible so that later on not only we will have the login registration we will also have the forgot password okay password research so that we can send email to users so when they click on the link they will be able to reset the password as well and not only that, we will also implement the social authentication, something like login with Google, login with Facebook, that sort of thing. Okay, so it's going to be a rock solid authentication. But before we move on to the authentication, let me just quickly do some code refactoring here. So if you go to the controller, and I'm in um, the routes here, okay, you see a bit of repetition here. For example, post controller dot get post post control again for the create post and it will only continue to grow. So what I would like to do is I would like to extract these methods here. Okay. So change this from post controller to this uh, object. So object and we destructure the methods directly there. Okay. Also do this one. Copy and paste here. So that means we don't have to keep writing this long uh, name here. Okay, here. Okay. So this works perfectly fine, and this is much more cleaner and much more readable. And yeah, there's not much repetition as well. Okay. So this is completely optional, but I guess you you will like this approach. Okay. Now with this, let's move on to the next section so that we can start working on the authentication. See you. Now that you understand the basics of Node.js, you should go ahead and start building a full stack project using Node. And I can't think of a better idea than building a complete social network using Node.js in the back end and React.js in the front end. Okay, so here I have a course in Udemy. If you search for Node React, Okay, hopefully my course will come on top, but at the moment it's sitting somewhere down here. And I've got uh, 4.1, hopefully I will get some good ratings. It's just uh, in the early stage, I've got only a few ratings, okay. But this course is absolutely incredible. Not because it's my course, because it covers everything from scratch to deployment in the cloud server, okay. So you will learn Node.js from scratch, React.js from absolute scratch. You'll learn the modern JavaScript, everything from scratch to the level where you can completely build a real world social network. And you also learn to deploy it to the cloud. Okay, so this covers everything. It, it covers login, register, forgot password, user profile, uploading images. There is relationships, likes, comments, and not only that, you will also learn to deploy it to the cloud hosting as well. 
there is so much more just have a look in the uh, preview video okay but what i would like to show you is i will give you a coupon so that way you will pay the minimum price if you are interested to enroll into this course so just go here have a coupon and type node react okay so all capital letter node react and if you apply you see now it's 14.99 but once you apply it will give you the discounted price 94 percent off okay so that is the maximum discount you can get so if you are interested in building this full stack social network from scratch to deployment where you will learn node.js and react.js from absolute scratch make sure to enroll into this course and apply this coupon code so that you pay the minimum price possible all right once again thank you for being part of this course and i hope to see you in my future courses as well thank you